Larry Kotlikoff says you just lost 8.6% of your retirement savings due to inflation. I, I just, I, I, I just exasperated to talk to my wife. I said, I don't understand why these people are doing this. I don't get it. And my wife says, are they dumb? I mean, he did, he does teach at BU. I said, I don't think he's dumb. I mean, he had an impact on my financial planning career with his book. Uh, you, you can't really see it back there, but spend till the end is back there someplace. And I, and, you know, AOC went to BU. Um, so we can, you know, obviously that's a strike against them. There's another con that went to BU too, economics. And I was like, Eesh. but I mean, I, but if we remember back in the late eighties, early nineties, I forgot the guy's name, uh, who, uh, who re energized BU and he was a, a good old fashioned conservative Democrat. I forgot his name. Um, John, I forgot, but anyway, he was the kind of guy I could support. Uh, but he lost against Bill B Weld in Massachusetts gubernatorial race. His name Silber, Silber, what do you say? And John Silber, uh, who uh, re-energized BU. BU was basically kind of like, uh, if you, th it, George Mason, where my wife and I met, and we went, uh, was kind of like a, a commuter, almost community college back in the 70s. And then they had a big flux of money to make it the academic institution is right now. Pretty interesting. BU is kind of the same thing. And so Boston University got its uh, rebirth because of this gentleman right here, John Silber. And uh, he ran, again, a conservative Democrat, pro-life, wasn't big on the PC crap. It just freaking, this is what we need back in politics. Uh, he was Democratic governor uh, to become the uh, candidate in Massachusetts. He lost uh, that election by all 38,000 votes. Um, it was just, you should, uh, he had a liberal reputation his days at Texas, so at BU is best known as a conservative spokesman in academia. Yeah. Big fan of this guy. Um, you should look him up. He's uh, he fantastic. He had eight kids. Eight kids. That just freaking kicks ass. I love John Silver. Anyway. That his reputation is being tarnished by Larry Kotlikoff, uh, by AOC, um, is, 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 too, is too bad. It's going to go down to infamy. But my big thing in Kotlikoff is he, I, he has to know better. I don't understand why he's doing this. So let's jump into this article that I saw from uh, MarketWatch. It actually showed up on my LinkedIn feed. I clicked on LinkedIn. And I, I don't know if I couldn't find it. So anyway, it's on MarketWatch. It might be someplace else. I don't know. You just lost 8.6% of your retirement savings. A prominent economist and best-selling author on exactly how much inflation could be eating into your savings. And so we're just going to scroll down to what Kotlikoff says here. Another way to think about what inflation is doing to your money is this. If you are 60 and have safely invested all of your savings in cash and bonds, you just lost 8.6% of retirement savings in real terms over the last 12 months. If you have a fixed dollar pension, this real value each year for the rest of your life just fell by 8.6%. I, I just, that's not true, Larry. You know it's not true. I mean, maybe done. I don't know. What's more, the market declines we're seeing this year, many retirees have been zapped. For many households, withdrawing from their retirement accounts, starting at retirement so they can defer Social Security benefits until 70 is a no-brainer. But that's exact opposite advice provided by Wall Street, Larry which wants you to hold on to your accounts so they can charge you fees. It's just, it's just, it's, it's like petty. I don't understand. So anyway, as we'll do again and again and again, we're going to look at my electricity bill. This is my, I have Sony uh, electrical, I guess it's a co-op. I'm not sure. And we're going to look at my bill from 2019. And this is uh, February, 2019. And we're going to look at my, my most recent bill which was in June of 2022, so 3.5 years later. So right now, my base charge is $22.85. Um, in 2019, my base charge in 2022 is $4 more. So my base charge went from $22.85 to $26.85. My, uh, my 500 kilowatts is at 7.6 cents a kilowatt hour. For 500 kilowatt hours, I should say, not kilowatts, kilowatt hours, 7.6 cents. Back then, 7.6 cents. The next 500 kilowatt hours, 7.36. Back then, 7.36. The next amount over 1,000 kilowatt hours used is uh, 5.4. Back then, 5.4. So the actual kilowatt, the dollar, the charge per kilowatt hour did not change at all over three and a half years. All right, my sales tax, 7.75. Back then, 7.75. My franchise fee, 
2019. My franchise fee, 8.69 in 2022. Wholesale power cost went from 28 to 42. All right, so that's it, man. That's it. So my my base charge went up by four bucks. My uh, wholesale power cost went up by 14 bucks. And my franchise fee went up by a buck. So my it went up by $19 on the entirety of my electricity bill. 19 bucks. Divide by 272. So it went up by 6.9% over three and a half years. That's two percent a year. That's just I'm sorry. That's not that's not a huge deal. Oh, but Josh, you're, you're missing what inflation covers. Oh, damn I. Let's check. Consumer price index measures the monthly change in prices paid by US consumers. The BLS calculates the CPI as a weighted average of prices of a basket of goods and services representative aggregate US consumer spending. Uh 93% I saw it someplace in here. 90 all right here. The widely quoted CPI is based on an index covering 93% of the U.S. population. Hmm, interesting. While a related index covering wage earners and clerical is used for uh, calculating COLAs for uh, federal benefits. Okay. The CPI is based on 94,000 prices quoted collected monthly from so, some 23,000 re 23, retail and service establishments, as well as 43,000 rental housing units. 43,000 rental housing units. You getting the ding, 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 huh? Housing rents are used to determine the estimate to change in shelter costs, including owner-occupied housing that's... What, 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 what? Housing rents are used to estimate the change in shelter costs, including owner-occupied housing that accounts for nearly a third of CPI. Shelter category prices account for nearly a third of the overall CPI are based on a survey of rental prices from 43,000 housing units. Huh. The owner's equivalent category models the rent equivalent for owner-occupied housing to properly reflect housing costs as a share of consumer spending. Huh. Isn't that interesting? So here are the eight major groups. Food and beverages. Affects me. Housing. Apparel. Transportation, education and communication, recreation, and other goods and services. But they're not 12.5% each now. <laughs> Over the years, CPI has frequently drawn criticism that is either understated or overstated inflation. I don't think very many people say it understates inflation. I think the vast majority says inflation is 30%. Because the CPI is based on consumer spending, it doesn't track third-party reimbursements for health care and significantly underweights health care relative to proportion of the GDP as a result. Hmm. On the other hand, criticizing, criticism concerning the quality adjustments using the CPI has been widely discounted by economists. Okay, let's keep reading here because I want to show you something. Here we go. Here is the exactal, exactal, exactal? Just made that up. Here is the uh, exact weighting. A third is going to housing. Interesting. 21% is going to commodities, which includes medication and autos. Interesting. 13% goes to food. 8.3% goes to energy. So I just showed you my energy bill over three and a half years has only gone up 2% a year. Other expenses goes 11.7. Healthcare, you can see all this. Huh. Housing called shelter is the highest weighted category. Shelter uses the concept of owner's equivalent of primary residence. Interesting. So uh, let's go into the owner's equivalent. How much has my mortgage gone up? Not at all. No. You own your home? Soon to be retiree, how much has your mortgage gone up? Well, it didn't go up because I don't own my because I own my home. So right now, inherently, we can discount roughly, I would say 33%. My property tax went up 400 bucks. So I was paying 7700 and now I'm paying uh 8100 7700 So my property tax went up by 5.2%. That's after a couple of years of not going up at all. My energy bill I just showed you has gone up 2% a year. I haven't looked at my natural gas. I imagine it's gone up a little bit. I don't drive that much. You might drive a lot, which sucks. 100% it sucks to see the high price of gasoline. If there's only a way to deal with that. Huh. Hmm. Only a way to deal with that. But how much you spend on gasoline vis-a-vis -vis your housing costs? Oh, you own your home outright. You're on a fixed rate mortgage. But Josh, I want to rent. The vast majority of us don't. So basically, the renters are di dictating the CPI for everyone else, which is stupid, man. I'm just sorry, it's dumb. 
shouldn't do that because we're not renting. We're not having adjustable rate mortgages. Even if you did, is your price of your mortgage going up 8.6%? I don't know. If you have fixed rate, you have it paid off. It's not. But Josh, I want to sell and move to something else. What's the cost of your home relative to the home you're going to buy? It's relative, dude. You you set, you have your house that was worth three hundred thousand bucks before. Now it's worth five hundred thousand bucks. The house you were going to buy before that was worth two fifty is now worth four fifty. Well, it's all the same. Even Stephen on both sides of the balance sheet. Hmm. Interesting. Let's keep looking at something else, though, shall we? I, I just want to show you. I thought this was interesting. Here's eggs. Price for eggs. Everyone's like, eggs are going to be $12 a dozen, according to uh, Scaremongers. All right, so let's go over to eggs. We're going to look. You can see eggs have gone up and down, up and down. Here's 1972, up and down, up and down. So let's just go to the last couple of years, 2019 to 2022. We're going to go to calculate inflation, and eggs are up 8.17% a year. All right, the current national average price is $2.86 for a dozen eggs. How many dozen of eggs have you spent? Or are you buying? How many dozen eggs are you buying? Or if you have your own chickens, you don't need that. That's a pretty big expense. I'm not going to lie to you. From 2019 to 2022, that's definitely gone up 8.7% a year, 8.17% a year. It's only $2.80 per dozen of eggs, though. <laughs> On top of that, we go to two, that was it, 2004. 15 let's see what we got i just it's the whole everyone like likes to discount the entirety of it now we're at negative 1.47 percent a year I, <laughs> so what was a dozen of eggs in 2015 costs less now than it did in 2015 no one wants to talk about that all right let's look at uh, let's look at gasoline We'll do gasoline because gasoline sucks. Not gonna lie to you. So if we go over the last, you know, couple of years, 2019, and we see gasoline, it's just this. I don't get this. It's gone up 13.96 percent a year for two from 2019 to 2022. If there's only a solution to that, slip Sniffy Joe. But if we go back to 2000, was that nine, ten, twelve? Looks like 2012. What has gas done? It's uh, gone up by 1% a year. 1% a year if you go back to 2012. Uh, what else here? I did something else in here. Let's go to, uh, hold on a sec. Oh, airline fares. Yeah, well, I mean, that's one way you got substitution. You could drive. The price of gas has gone higher. But airline fares over 2019 or 2000 and, uh, let's see, 2022. Let's see if they just gives us this year so far. Yeah, I don't think it does. Let's go to 2021 and see what airline fares have gone up to. Uh, 21% a year. Larry Kolokov, see, I told you, you just lost 8.6% of your money. But if you go back to 2013, <laughs> it's just so freaking stupid, man. I just don't get, I, I, it's actually gone down 2% a year since 2013. What else? What else? What else? Uh, I'm not going to go down. Let's go to this other one. I want to I want to look at beef. Beef. Let's look at beef. B-E-E-F right there. Beef. So beef has gone up 4.12% a year going back to 1935. We'll go to 2019. Yeah, I mean, I would expect beef to go up 8.32% um, a year. And that's a big hit to inflation for sure. But again, if you go to CPI, food consists of what? 13.4%. And there's something called substitution effect. If beef's too high, you buy chicken. And we can look at chicken here. We'll go to uh, all categories and we'll type in chicken. Um, I, you know, I'd rather buy beef than chicken, but it's, I mean, this is where the chicken since 1997 has gone up by 2.42% a year. All right, let's look at, uh, yeah, it's gone up. Look at that. For the last three years, chicken's gone up quite a bit. I think some have to do with the cost of chicken in California. You got to look at California because California is the biggest state by far. It's gone up 6.63% a year. And California just banned um, with uh, pork, and I think it was chicken too, which is going to inherently increase the price of chicken and pork in California. Not because of the inflation, but because of the banning of what they've done with their stupid laws, man. Anyway, but either, be it as it may, I mean, chicken's gone up 6.63% a year, and that sucks, but right now, 
Again, food is 13.4% of my CPI. Commodities, medication, autos. When's the last time you bought a new car? I, I mean, just, it's just weird, man. And then if we go back to chicken, we'll just go back to 2000, to 2022. We're going to see chicken's gone up by 2.64% a year for the last uh, 22 years. Go ahead, I didn't show you that. Seems like there's something else I wanted to show you. I think we did electricity. Let's just do general electricity. Um, yeah, so electricity right here, you can see it starts going down when the fracking thing came in. Um, you know, it's still gone up, don't get me wrong. And it, you know, you, if you more you uh, regulate electricity, the more the price is going to go. It's gone up by 2.9% a year since 2000. But yeah, we're going to be focused on the 8.6. I don't get it. I don't understand. It's just weird to me. It's like the clickbait crap. It's, uh, I, I uh, the hatred of Wall Street, I get. I mean, I can't stand Wall Street. I think they should be, uh, you know, we should tax, 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 tax. Make them pay. Bring the pain. But um, I, this idea that we've lost 8.6% is just freaking stupid. Why are they doing it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, we'll see you.